Hello everybody, my name is Sface. Today I'm going to be testing out the T5 Electric Abyss with the broadsword. So the broadsword fit I used before cost now 780 mil, I checked. And so that's a pretty good fit for how much tank we're able to get. I'm able to get like 680 ESP per second tank, so that's much more than my T5 running healer. The only problem is this ship does not have so good DPS and unfortunately the range is not so good either, so I worry that in the T5 sites, we've got pretty good tank for the T5, okay? Pretty decent tank, in fact, above average tank. The only problem is I worry that we'll go step into time issues because of the lack of DPS and applicability. So let's try this out. Let's try the chaotic electrical and see if we can pull through. I hope we can pull through. I'm pretty sure we will. We're using the Republic Fleet EMPM. The reason we're able to achieve such a boss tank, as I've told you before, is that the broadsword has an amazing capacitor. So because of that, in the electrical side, so we're camp stable and able to have so much boosting capabilities. 196 EHP per second with really nice resistances. So let's go here. I think this should not be any issue. This is sleeper waves. We'll be able to face tank them properly. I'm going to avoid this orange cloud over here because we're going to use crazy amounts of capacitor by doing that. So we're going to keep on going here and we'll actually take out the cruisers first so that we can get most DPS off the grid. But I don't actually think that'll be much an issue. Let's go for the upholders. Then we'll go for the wardens to be able to get the speed up to par. Let's just take a little detour around this orange cloud over here because our capacitor will not be so good with the orange cloud. They make our shield booster use much more capacitor. We're getting in range, we're getting in range. It's really nice with the broadsword that we don't have drones. I don't have to worry about, you know, forgetting my drones or anything. It's pretty pretty chill. It's a very chill ship, I have to say. Very chill. This guy really does not care about anything. He just just keeps going forward. Just really. This ship is just so chill. Alright, I get a notification that someone just subscribed. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Alright. That guy just died straight away. Let's go for the Lucid Upholder. Go to this guy. Mm -hmm. The Warden went down really quickly. So that is, that is really good. It's just amazing how how good this applies when you actually get into range. But it takes a bit of time to get in range. And also the DPS is not amazing. You'll see here. When it comes to the cruisers, it will not be as fast. You see, it's not that crazily fast. Like if we use a gear, it'll be much faster. I'm getting, there's getting a lot of remote reps as well. You can see here from all these guys here remote repping. We can actually go for the preservers. These guys do remote reps, so we'll take out him. Unlock these guys, unlock the preservers. Let's go here. We need to save as much time as possible so we'll make our way towards the conduit. I don't want to waste any time just traveling with my slow, slow afterburn. It'll be really annoying. Take out the uphold over here, and then we'll take out the second preserver after this guy. I didn't have him locked up, so I just want to... Oh, I wanted to attack this guy first. Otherwise, it should be pretty simple. I mean, I, I really hope we can pull through. It'll be really cool to get the broadsword to actually do a T5. I definitely do not think it'll be like an optimal setup because it'll be really hard for us to get the extraction nodes. But it'll probably be a good ship to be able to do the buy adaptives at least. We can actually go for it right here. Grab this. Okay, he went down pretty quickly. Let's go for the last preserver because the preserver has pretty strong remote reps. So it'll just make everything go faster because we're going to get less remote reps. And we're taking actually a bit of newting pressure. I've noticed here. You see this? Got quite a bit of newting pressure. Let's see now. Oh, yeah, there's a lot of neuters on grid. Let's go for the firewatches. Actually, I didn't know. I underestimated the newting power. We can, we can obviously just pulse our shield booster because we're tanking so much. So really, it won't really matter at all that we're just being neutered out because we can. Uh, we have crazy amounts of capacity. If we turn off our shield booster, it's just insane how good the capacity is on the broadsword. Let's keep our web fire on them. This is a really nice web. The Federation Navy Stasis web fire. It's such a popular web, and I also I understand why it's such a popular web. This web of fire over here. Because it just has a, such an amazing range and it has really good web of firing capability, 60% less range. So it's just really good. So much better. Anything in the abyss, there's rarely ships in the abyss that orbit you are further than 14 kilometers away. And if they do, it's usually if they're going after like your drones or something. I can see this guy here is just skirting outside my range. We'll be able to just web him if we get closer, but obviously we're moving away. So that's why he's getting a little bit outside my range, I think. Otherwise, I don't think it'll be such a big issue. It should be pretty simple, pretty damn simple, actually. See here, time is not so good, but if we can complete this wave under five minutes, I'll be happy. I'll be really happy because then we will be able to easily do this site easy peasy lemon squeezy because of how just you know if you're if you're at the five minute mark when you complete a room then you're really good you're really set then you start times two, times three 15 really good you cannot go over six minutes and like 30 seconds or something like that because then you're going to if you keep doing that then you're going to eventually run out of time so you want to be careful but it seems like we're actually going to complete this room just under or just above five minutes so i think that is a pretty good 
pretty good sign actually pretty good sign that we may as well complete this side I wonder if we'll do it faster than the Onyx if we do complete. You know, the Onyx got pretty lucky they completed that one one site, otherwise it didn't have that good tank. This on the other hand has an amazing tank. And I think it actually has actually better DPS than the Onyx because it is able to apply better the small stuff as well as having slightly higher DPS. I remember the the Onyx had like 400 DPS with Kalari Navy, so I don't think it's as good when with regards to you know the scourge rage that the onyx had the onyx's scourge rage will do more than the the broadswords uh, imperial navy or not imperial navy i'm so used to imperial navy the republic fleet emp the reason we're only going to use this is because we don't have any short range like high damage take two ammo that doesn't do that does em damage we've got like the quake i think it's called or is it now or hail yeah hail and that is explosive damage it is all on stage it's better to use the the Republic Fleet EMP because of how they have better tracking, better range, and also the EM damage will help us a lot. And it will really benefit us a lot when it comes to getting through these guys really quickly. See here, mm, okay, not the best amount of time there, but we're just over five minutes, so it should be pretty good. Okay, get ready to press here as soon as we up. There we go. Come on. Oh, I thought I was at zero. I didn't notice that I was actually gliding outside. Okay, but if we keep up at this pace, we will beat the t5 we will beat the t5 oh this is a dangerous wave this is one of the ways where i think we can actually potentially die not because like we can like usually i'm able to kite these guys but they've got pretty short range and we call also pretty short range and because of them having extremely high dps in these rogue drone battle cruisers it's gonna be pretty much a bit of a big issue right which resistance is lowest kinetic is lowest so we've got to go for the strike grips right here strike grips do kinetic damage strike like a striking I don't know, <laughs> like something striking, like a kinetic ball or kinetic, kinetic energy. Think of it like that. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see now. We're gonna keep range now. Keep range. Don't want them to get too close. We may have to overheat because how these guys are doing quite, yeah, quite a bit of damage. But then again, maybe we'll be able to outrep them. Maybe we'll be just about be able to outrep them. We'll see. We'll probably be able to kill them pretty fast actually because we don't have to worry about drones. When the Gila is doing this, he always has a problem with drones. Because these guys love to go for drones so if we keep we're not able to kill them so quickly because of how they've how they've got so many like so much a love for killing drones so your dps is significantly reduced because your drones have to like just travel back and forward all the time but since here we can just continuously blast maybe we'll be doing it actually at the same speed as the killer and oh did you see that wrecking shot right there oh my god that was scary but we just boosted up straight away so that was really good mm-hmm They've got some remote reps as well, but I think we'll actually just go for this because we really do not want to take any wrecking shots more, any more wrecking shots after this. Strike grip, your time is limited. Your time is limited. We'll go, what is our second lowest resistance? Second lowest resistance, like 65. Okay, explosive. Let's go for the blast grip. It's like an explosive blast. Oh, they're getting really close now. I think we are in their optimal range. Now, the optimal range is like 500 or something. Oh, this is a bit scary. This is a bit scary, but we've got good shield boosting. Good shield boosting. You see that? Oh, good shield boosting right there. We can webify him so he's not able to get so close. You can see here we're getting pulling out of his range. That's good. That's good. All right, keep going, keep going. All right, seems like we're pulling through. Actually, we got a wrecking shot, but we still survived pretty well. Pretty well. Impressive, impressive. And also for the blast grip, which will do quite a bit of DPS because of how the blast grip has, you know, explosive damage will be an issue for us. Uh, okay, let's go for this. But we're getting, we're getting out of the range, actually. They don't even want to go after us. What is going on right here? We're doing pretty well. Let's see now. Let's see. Okay, get a bit closer now. Get a bit closer. Oh, maybe it's because we're getting next to the border or something. They don't want to get close to the border. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. The Rogue Run Battle Cruisers maybe are smart. They don't, unlike Caribdis, who just goes straight rams into the border. These guys see, oh, the border is there. Let's just pull back a little bit. We don't want to go too close, you know. So they may be a bit smarter than Kribbis, actually. Oh, we're so far away from the transfer conduit. We need to get closer to the transfer conduit because we're going to take forever to get there. Spark grips. Okay, let's go for these these remote wrapping guys. That is really... Oh, we just one-tap these guys. <laughs> wrecked. 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 You got wrecked. Wrecked, man. You got wrecked so hard. How does it feel, Field Weaver? You just got wrecked so hard. Oh, we really actually, like a boss, 
destroyed this wave. I thought this would be a problem because I thought we would, because of how we've got short range ammo and these guys got really high DPS, but they're not usually a threat because of them having really short range. I thought we would maybe die because their DPS will be so high that we won't be able to stand it at close range. But you can see there for brief amounts of seconds, we did have trouble, but we boosted up really quickly and we were able to kill them in pretty decent amounts of time as well. Actually, let's turn off our web because so these guys can keep following me so that we, because now if we web them, they will probably go out of optimal range. Okay, let's go here. Hmm. All right, let's see now. We're gonna have to just quickly cruise f from and back out of and in and out of optimal range, actually, because this guy doesn't seem he's it seems like he's trying to like orbit or something. No, he's trying he's trying to get close to me now. I just um I don't want to make it so that I can't do any damage, but I want to keep a, at the same time having some kind of velocity vector towards the transfer conduit. But I'm really surprised. I'm impressed. I just keep getting impressed after impression. What did I say? I keep getting surprise after surprise after surprise and how good this broadsword is. This is an amazing ship. I definitely can see this being a good T4 alternative, at least for people who want to use something different than the Gila. But T5, I'm not sure if the time will be the best, but it seems definitely like it's possible, at least so far from what we've seen. Maybe we'll get bad wave next, but we're making good time. You can see here. Just over 10 minutes and we're on the last wave now. The afterburner is just taking forever, forever, absolutely forever. It's just annoying, really annoying. <laughs> we're wasting a lot of time actually. We could have, you know, we wasted probably like a whole minute just traveling now from this thing. So this is really, probably, I, well, I should have should been smart about how I kited the Drogatron battle because I sort of tried to kite them because they were like here, and I spawned like here. So and I was just like kind of keeping my distance here and when they keep going after me I just keep my distance Maybe I should have like kind of gone around here So they kind of kited them around the gate that would have probably been smart of me because then now I would have saved a lot of time You have to be smart in the broadsword. It's not like a brain dead gila kind of fit You know you have to actually think when using this ship. So that's an interesting thing You know you have to think a bit more than just deploying your drones blast away with your missiles a little bit more to it than that Obviously, if you're in the gear, you have to also have some kind of awareness of piloting, but it's not at all as much as it seems like when it's using these artillery, or not the artillery, but the auto cannon fit. Broadsword, the broadsword, the mighty broadsword coming through, coming through. Watch out, coming through. We're going to just scoop up your wreck, Triglavians. All right, that's pretty bad loot for the Trig T5, actually. Like, look at this. Nine mil, two sites, that's two rooms. That's absolutely horrendous. Okay, let's go to the third room. Third room, will it complete it or will it not complete it? I hope so. Time? All right, we wasted like two whole minutes traveling. So really, if you're using the broadsword, definitely have to be smart in where you're piloting. You always want to be, you always want to be close to the transfer conduit at all costs. Okay, what have we got here? We've got starvings. So we want to take out these starvings right here. Got a bunch of anchorings. We don't want to worry about the anchorings because it's just these guys. They're not going to do anything to us. We're in an AB, so it doesn't really matter at all. We can actually, let's go to the medium range multi-body, not multi-body, the automatic suppressor. It will allow us, no, we don't want to go for this, we want to go for this one here. It will allow us to take out the rogue drones, because you can see here there are quite a few rogue drones, and they're going to take damage from the automatic suppressor. It'll make us go even faster. So I think we actually have completed this, because this will probably go really fast. Hmm. All right. This is a bit of explosive damage, so that is good because they have a bit of an explosive hole, but I still think it's actually better to have EM damage because EM damage is really powerful in the electrical sites. You know, EM damage is such like a boss in the electrical sites. Let's take out after starving. We'll take out this Vedmac over here because we've got another Vedmac. And we're applying really good damage to this damage, even though it's so tiny. We're applying really good with that web and the Imperial, uh, not the Imperial Navy. I'm so used to saying Imperial Navy for any kind of faction thing. Republic Fleet EMP, really good. Amazing, absolutely amazing. Let's see if we can get a bit closer to this guy. So we'll web him. Web, web, web. Yes, web, 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 web. Okay, go, 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 go there. Web this guy. It's going to be even easier for us to apply. The closer we get, the more damage we do. I keep forgetting that, you know, auto cannons and just our projectile guns in general. I'm not used to using them. I rarely use them. They're really good because they just uh, are not good. It's actually kind of like almost like a downside. They have pretty good fall offs, so that's good. But then they have a really short optimal range. So that is like an issue when you want to, you know, do damage or optimal damage. You have to get really close to be able to do your perfect damage. We're taking a bit of damage now. I can imagine the Vedmax are spooling out quite a bit. But it should not be much of an issue because we're good. we just killed one right there. We're going to take out another one right here. 
And we honestly should not have any because I usually never have much problems tanking Bed and Nagila with much less tank than this. So I think we'll pull through pretty good. The only difference is that Nagila is able to, to kite them a lot better because of how it's got an MWD. The Bed have limited range, 22 kilometer range about, so you're able to kite the Bed pretty easily with the Gila. Not in the broadsword. He's just going to take everything straight to the face. Punch it as much as you want. He doesn't care though. Doesn't care. Just recharges his recharges the shield like a boss let's go towards the, actually the bioadaptive we don't want to waste any more time actually see now five and a half minutes left okay that's not so good time i would have hoped to have a bit better time see here the red max taking quite long actually to kill i would have thought they would go down quicker but they've actually taken quite a long time that's the downside you know we've not got so much raw dps we've got pretty good applicability with the web fire but when it comes to ships with just a lot of ehp in general it's difficult it's difficult you know it's difficult also i think it has to do with that we've got lots of the dynamics on the grid dynamics are all going to be remote repairing these guys because ultra glavians have an innate remote repairing no not so good the renewing is a lot better but all of them have some kind of innate remote repairing that's going to obviously make the site running a lot a lot slower than when there are no other trigger lightnings in the grid in fact if the in the leshak room for the t5s there's a bunch of leshaks they can sometimes repair them from like zero armor to almost full armor within just uh like like a minute or so they're pretty strong pretty damn strong these trigger lightnings they know what they're doing because they only have one high slot so they got so many utility highs so they can just use it all for these remote repairs so they're pretty they're pretty like well-rounded they can do a lot of things you can put smart bombs on them as well and that's also a good thing with the trigger lightning ships they don't have them obviously in the npc versions of them but the true lightning ships are pretty cool because you can have so many utility highs you can have salvages you can maybe have a bunch of like smart bombs you can maybe have lots of neutralizers so like you can do be quite creative actually have a lot of remote repairs pretty interesting okay let's get this blue here 10 mil okay absolute crap so really crap blue from here let's go for the anchoring because he's going to repair the rogue drones and it'll help it go through make it take less time to actually go through the rogue drones if we take out the digger down of first all right let's go let's go let's go we're basically finished we're basically finished we only need to just kill these few remaining damavics and the rogue drones will just go down like flies i think we'll probably almost one shot them because they're so damaged from the automata suppressor really good really good i'm impressed broadsword is an epic ship really boss tank absolute boss tank boss resistances boss capacitor only problem is dps probably if my let's see i want to check something here what do i need to get more dps Mm hmm okay i don't i can't do any of these skills to get more dps because this only thing the difference is that heavy interdiction will make so i have better fall off so i guess if i train up my projectile skill specialization maybe it will be a bit better but then again maybe it only it only affects i think the tech 2 ammo i think so it won't affect the republic fleet emp i believe but if i use maybe some drugs that increase my dps that can be a good thing i didn't use any pyrolance this time i actually forgot about that we can see here no power lancer and we still pull through 17 minutes for t5 in a broadsword with absolute boss tank 780 mil ship you should, guys maybe should check it out on the test server yourself if you want to try this out Leave, let me know what you think about this if you what is let me know if in general what do you think about the broadsword do you think it's a good ship because i think it definitely seems like a good potential for a t5 running ship only problem is you know as i say before said many times side clearing time does not totally seem to be that good 17 minutes is cutting it very close you got three minutes maybe if we got really unlucky spawns it maybe would have taken longer but it seems to be very all round ship we're able to get out very far with the federation navy stasis web fire and it's still decent with that 20 kilometer fall off range it's still pretty decent all right i think we've gone on for enough now that's it for the t5 side guys hope you enjoyed if you did please leave a like and subscribe i'll catch you guys later